you're watching Gears. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, a while back, we rescued an old 69 International cab over truck from the junkyard and immediately began to bring it back to life by sticking in a hot Duramax diesel engine from PPE and a custom air suspension from Kelderman Air Ride. Roll that footage, Matt. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Keep going. And since then, people have been dying to know what goes back here. In other words, what is this truck going to be? Well, first of all, it needs to be something that's functional. I mean, it actually has to have a use and a purpose, like this. Second, it needs to continue the junkyard vibe. Remember the truck? The base engine, the axles, all that came out of a salvage yard. And when you toss all that together, throw in the name heavy metal, there's really only one thing that this truck can be. That's right, a hot rod tow truck. So the search was on to find the right tow bed for this project. And that search took us to Hartford, Connecticut and a place called Corona's Auto Parts. Corona's Auto Parts has been in business since 1937 making it one of the oldest salvage yards in Connecticut, or anywhere else for that matter. Fortunately, Coronas has kept up with the times, and over the years, they've grown into a state-of-the-art salvage yard that can deliver cars and parts all across the nation. You know, if we have the part, we'll pull it. If we can't locate it, if, uh, if it's not something that we do have on our shelf, we'll locate it and actually provide it uh, to the customer. But a truck like Heavy Metal has got to have a vintage tow bed on it. And the truck that caught my eye was Corona's old tow truck, long since retired, sitting out back in the weeds. Truck pretty much was running for police calls, police towing, abandoned vehicles, junk vehicles. Of course, this was perfect for what I had in mind for the Heavy Metal project. So in just a few days, <laughs> We found ourselves unloading a classic dual wrecker bed. You do body work on that with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's quarter inch steel, man. And look at those dents in there, though, man. Ain't no way I'm going to pound those dents out. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Now, what we've got here is a Holmes 500 dual wrecker bed from the early 60s. And as you can see, there's almost no rust on this thing, which is pretty rare for Connecticut. Now, the cool thing about these old Holmes wreckers is that you can not only carry junk out the back, but these booms will swing out to the side so you can do a side recovery. Then you got all these cool cables and all this great stuff. Now, obviously, the big winch in the center is what controls the hooks, but these things are old school enough to where you control the height of the booms with this big crank. So you just stick it on the shaft and crank away. <laughs> Is that cool or what? Now, like I said before, the big winch in the center controls the hooks. The winch gets its power from a PTO on the transmission and you control the winch with these dual levers on both sides of the bed. Up front, you have storage and tool bins, and of course your light bar, all built by Holmes back in the day. Now, even though the length and the width of this bed is pretty close to what we need for this truck, there is no way that this is just gonna drop on and bolt up and be perfect. It's just not gonna happen. And that's always the case anytime that you take on a project 
where you're combining two major components together. It's up to you to make them fit and to make them look good. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is disassemble the bed so we can focus on mounting the wrecker booms properly. Now, on a unit this old, you can expect to use a lot of penetrating lube and to find a few surprises. Look at this. Got the old power takeoff unit. Got some safety equipment in here from who knows how long ago. Oh, look at these little flares, man. Look at these things. What a shot. Oh, what's this? <laughs> there you go. Now with that taken care of, the next step is to set the bed on the truck to see what we got. Now you can do this with a floor lift or about 10 really big dudes, but for something this heavy and awkward, a crane is the best way to go. Hey, we're back. And in the process of mounting a vintage Holmes dual wrecker bed on our old international truck. Now, anytime that you do a project that involves mounting a bed or a cab on a different chassis, you can expect to have to deal with some misalignment and some mounting issues. This is no exception. Take a look. With the rear tires centered up in the wheel wells for reference, as you can see, we've got some contact happening here on this four link bracket. And that's keeping the wrecker from dropping down onto the frame. So what we're going to do is modify these brackets to fit with the four-link bracket. The first step is to get the old brackets off of the bed. And with 40-year-old Connecticut hardware, it's going to take some persuasion. So the bigger the tools and the bigger the hammer, the better. Fortunately, the brackets themselves weren't rusty, and since they're made out of thick quarter-inch steel, we definitely wanted to reuse them. So after they were cut down to fit the four-link bracket, the next step was to drill the many holes needed to bolt the bracket to the frame and the wrecker unit. Now since this bracket is the link that actually connects the front of the wrecker to the frame, it needs to be strong. So don't even think about reusing the old rusty, crusty bolts that you took off. Underneath the bed, we're going to have to clearance some of the old original braces so the bed fits down properly on our frame rails. Fortunately, these Holmes wreckers were designed to be adaptable to different frame widths. So it's not going to take much to get the bed to fit solidly on our international frame. All right, we've got our front frame mounts taken care of. We've got clearance underneath. Now we need to figure out a way to mount the back of the unit to the back of the frame. So what we're going to do is utilize these stock brackets, fabricate a piece that'll bolt here and to the frame of the wrecker unit. Now these rear brackets are basically designed to just hold the rear of the bed in place and they don't have to handle the force that the winches are putting on those front brackets, but they still need to be strong. So we're going to use 3 8 inch steel plate to build them.
While the bed's up in the air, it's also a good time to get rid of the old fender flares and anything else that we're not going to use. One of the biggest surprises was to find solid metal around the fender openings, since rust is almost always lurking under those rubber flares, especially on an old tow truck. Now, since a project like this will involve installing and removing the bed numerous times, that's another good reason to use a crane if you have one, because those 10 big dudes be getting pretty tired by now. All right, once you have all your brackets made and you've dealt with the fitment issues, finally you can bolt it all together. For now, we're using grade five bolts, but when we do the final assembly on this rig, we're definitely gonna be using grade eight hardware for strength. And all of a sudden, we got ourselves a tow truck. Kind of, because we're only halfway there. So the next thing that we're gonna deal with is fuel tanks. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our hot rod tow truck project called Heavy Metal. Now, as you can see, we are mounting a vintage wrecker bed to our old cab over truck to not only create a one of a kind tow truck, but to also show you that it's possible to build a really cool vehicle just using a bunch of leftover parts. Now, as you can see, we have the wrecker bed in place. Now it's time to do something about the fuel tanks. And we got the perfect place to put fuel tanks right here. But the trick is we want to come up with something that's different and something that has some cool hot rod character, like a couple of big beer kegs. The problem is no cool beer kegs have been made for a long time. Fortunately, there's eBay. Come on. Now, what I found was a matching set of 15 and a half gallon stainless steel Schlitz beer kegs from the early 70s. <laughs> yeah, these are great. Now, since we're going this far, I also picked up a vintage Schlitz beer tap that I'm gonna use as a shifter handle. This will give me exactly the look and the attitude that I was hoping to get for that truck. Now, using a keg for a fuel tank, that's been around for decades, but you don't just bolt them on and expect them to work this way. You gotta set them up as a fuel tank. So, we ship these off to Rick's Tanks in Texas because they specialize in custom tanks. Here's what they did for us. Welded on bungs for ins and outs, a filler neck, a flange for a sending unit, everything that we're gonna need to supply fuel to that diesel engine. Now, since we're talking about sending units, we probably ought to take a look at them and the gauges that go with them. These come from classic instruments, and this is what they call their American tradition gauge. Now take a look at this. You can see they've got the chrome bezel, they've got the beveled glass, they've got the cool pointers, they've got the wings logo. This is a great looking set of gauges. Now the cool thing about classic instruments is you don't have to just settle for what's in their catalog. They will custom make your gauges for you. For example, that truck has two main gauges in it. We're gonna replace those gauges with these two. But with these two gauges, we're gonna have speedometer and tack in one. Then we're gonna have volts, temperature, gas, and oil in the other. Then we're gonna add these two smaller gauges, a boost and a clock, just to round everything out. Now, of course, Classic Instruments comes with all the sending units, the brains, everything that you're gonna need to make them work for your application. All you have to do is put them in. All right, to mount your kegs, the first thing you have to do is decide where you're gonna put them. And on a truck like this, the best place is gonna be right back here in this pocket. That way we're gonna have all kinds of room up in the front to build toolboxes or whatever else we wanna do. Now, if we're gonna mount it back in this area, obviously we have to have something to mount it to, and it has to be strong and functional. This is what we're gonna do. Fortunately, we have some potential mounting points up here on the wrecker unit and down here on the four link bracket. So we're gonna fabricate a plate that'll hold the kegs utilizing those mounting points. We're gonna use 3 16 inch steel for strength and for working metal this thick, the best tool to use is an iron worker.
we're back and mounting vintage beer kegs on our project for fuel tanks. Now, we've got a nice strong bracket fabricated here. Now the question is, how do you mount a round surface to a flat surface? I got the solution right over there. All of this comes from a company called In The Ditch, and they specialize in custom toolboxes and all kinds of hardware and brackets that you can mount on your truck or in a trailer to help you organize cords or tools or whatever. Now, the one thing that caught my eye is this little bracket here that's made to hold a small garbage can. Now, since In The Ditch will make things to your specifications, we took the idea for this and had them make some special aluminum brackets to hold the kegs. Now all we have to do is bolt them on. Now, even with accurate measurements, there's still a lot of drilling and tweaking to fit something like this on a rig properly. So be prepared to take the time and do it right. The key to our kegs is to not only get them to sit in the pocket top to bottom and front to rear, but also to sit out away from the frame the right distance so they match the width of the rear fenders. Now, quick tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Anytime that you're mounting a fuel tank, brake lines, any other component to a vehicle, and it's going to be subjected to a lot of vibration, you want to avoid metal to metal contact. Because those metal components will rub against each other that can cause the tank to rupture or the lines to break. Not a good thing. Fortunately, there is a simple solution to that. Check this out. Just go down to a hardware store, pick yourself up some of this foam rubber pad or a frame pad. And for brake and fuel lines, you've got these rubber mounting brackets, and that will give you the cushion that you need to mount these properly. Now, like I said before, this stuff is available at pretty much any auto parts store or hardware store across the nation. You just need to make sure that you're using it. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. Once the keg brackets are clamped in place and all the holes are drilled, you're ready to bolt the kegs on the truck. And hopefully they're sitting exactly where you wanted them to. But the only way to know for sure is to roll the rig out, mock it up, and take a good look at what you've done. Now this is a tow truck. Now check this out to give you an idea how everything's fitting together. We've got the bed in place, the kegs, we've got the side exhaust mocked in so you can see how that's gonna look. I mean, this thing is awesome. Now obviously, we still need to do something with toolboxes up here in the front. I'm gonna radius the rear fender wells a little differently, but this gives you an idea what this thing's gonna look like. And there's not gonna be anything else out there like it. And that's the idea here to show you that you don't have to spend a fortune finding your next project. Sometimes the best stuff is sitting in junkyards, eBay, swap meets, those kind of places. All you have to do is add your time, your money, and your imagination. What are you working on? Brought to you by Dake. If you have the dream, we have the tools. Today's What Are You Working On comes from a Pennsylvania State Trooper by the name of Michael Fennell. Now, Michael's always liked fast cars, says he built model cars all of his life, so it wasn't by chance that he found himself talking cars with another state trooper one day and found out that that trooper happened to have a 64 Pontiac Tempest in their garage. So Michael begged and borrowed and pleaded, and this is what he ended up driving home. Now, of course, the car is cool, but it's not fast enough for a guy like Michael. So after driving it stunk for a year, he tore it all apart and started rebuilding it. The chassis was completely rebuilt with upgraded suspension parts and brakes, and a seriously hot 454 was stuffed between the frame rails. I mean, what do you expect from a state trooper? Of course, the body was smoothed out and the interior was redone. And fortunately, Michael had a lot of help from his two daughters. 
And after six years of doing almost all the work himself, this is what rolled out of the garage. Just in time for the girls to want to use it for dates. <laughs> oh, Michael, man, it's a good thing that you're a cop because you're going to have your hands full. The best part is, though, you had the girls help you on the car. It's the best way to teach kids how to respect and understand cars. So to recognize the job that you've done, we are going to give you one of these Dake Arbor Presses to help you on your next project. And down that same line, we're going to give you a year's subscription to Four Wheeler Magazine. So on your next project, maybe you can build a Jeep. I know you have another daughter that's going to want that. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get your project featured on the show, you got to send it into What Are You Working On? We'll do our best to get it on the air. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and like us on Facebook. But before you do all that, get out there and work on something. We'll see you next time.